This is something some of you have been waiting for. An update on the cacti that I'm growing in small containers. But today, we won't be looking at the new batch that is growing indoors. Instead, we'll be taking another look at the older batch, which, if you remember well, is outside under filtered sunlight. I will dedicate another video very soon to the small containers that I am growing inside my apartment. But for now, I thought we could take another look at the ones outside, because I noticed a few interesting things. First off, I have to say these plants have been totally neglected. We've had great weather this year, it's been the warmest October on record in many countries in Europe, and even now in November we still have spring-like weather. Absolutely unbelievable. I should have taken advantage of that weather and watered my plants as soon as the soil was dry, which in the case of these containers would have been twice a week. I say twice a week because the soil level has been raised. More soil means it remains wet longer. If on the other hand, the containers still had their original much lower soil level, then I could have watered as often as every other day, depending on the temperature. But I did none of that. I only watered them about once a month, which means that the growth achieved is very far from what it could have been. Why didn't I water more often? Well, I just didn't have the time. This year, I've had my best year ever when it comes to flowering. I've had so many flowers, and this was an opportunity I did not want to miss. You would not believe the amount of time that it took me to produce the seeds this year. Having so many flowers meant it took me so much longer to do all the work. For each flower, I have to collect the pollen, which will then have to be frozen. I then have to pollinate that flower, put pollination bags on before and after the pollination, put a plastic marker around each flower with information about the cross, and also write detailed notes in a book, and take photos of the plastic marker on the plant in case it falls off. Then, when the fruit opens, providing of course the pollination with a success, I have to clean the seeds, which means first wash them and dry them. Then the next day, disinfect them and dry them. Then the next day, pack them in glass in bags and place them in an airtight container with a bag of silica gel. You repeat all that process for well over 100 fruits and that is a huge amount of time, hundreds of hours. This is why I have neglected all my plants this summer, including these small containers. In fact, I was going to repot them, but of course I did not have time for that either. I think I've only repotted two or three of them. So, when looking at the plants, bear in mind that they could have grown a lot more if I had watered them as I should have. In this video, we're not going to have a look at all the containers, far from it, just a couple of highlights but I'll be keeping a few of each variety, so we'll go back to these plants in the future to see how they look, how fast they grow, and how different from each other they are. Later on in this video, we'll take a look at some of the peyotes that have been growing in small containers. Not just the current batch, but also earlier batches that I still haven't reported. This has been requested by a few subscribers, so I would be happy to show you that. The first one we'll be taking a look at was a real surprise to me. It's Terskeki ivy times Pacanoi reals. In other words, a fat sacred Trichocereus crossed with a San Pedro. And the surprise is how fast it is growing. To put this in perspective, take a look at this other container with Pacanoi Sardaniola A1 crossed with the same Terskeki ivy. The plants are considerably smaller, but it should be the contrary. They should be much bigger, because here the mum, always dominating over the dad, is a Pacanoi which grows much faster than a terskeki. The funny thing is, originally this container was the fastest growing of the two. You may remember that from one of the previous videos. But for some reason, the IV times reals has now picked up in speed and overtaken the other container. And I can assure you the two containers have been given the same exact growing conditions. The best way I can explain it is that reals grow super fast. Even my adult cuttings of it are growing crazy fast. The real strain grows so fast that it manages to turbo boost the terskeki, which is normally a super slow grower. I plan to dedicate a video on reals very soon, so make sure you subscribe now so you don't miss it. If you pay attention, there are some smaller plants in there, and those are either monstrous or variegated. It's quite normal for variegated plants to grow much slower, especially when the plant is just getting established. Some of them have very strange shapes, 
it will be interesting to see how they evolve. I know that a lot of people who are growing this cross are over the moon with the results. Unfortunately, that particular variety was from last year and is now sold out. However, I still have a few of the opposite of that cross, which is Pacanoi Reels by Terskeki Ivy. And I think I will grow it very soon, so that we can see how it compares. Very exciting stuff. Now let's take a look at that other Terskeki container. This one is Sir Daniela A1 times Terskeki Ivy. Like I mentioned earlier, it's obviously not as fast a grower as when it is crossed with reals, but it should be super interesting nevertheless. I can see three plants in there that are starting to variegate. On two of those, the very first signs of variegation have just started to show, which makes me think more plants are likely to have them as well. If you want to see one of those variegated seedlings at a later stage, someone posted a photo of one on Reddit. I put the link of that Reddit thread in the description if you're interested. Now if you want to see the opposite, which is IV times Sardaniola A1, here it is. It's one of the very few small containers that actually got around to repotting. They should have all been repotted by now, but I'm always short of time. That container was repotted in these four pots, which are about 3 by 3 in inches. Many of you will probably want to give each plant more room, using more pots. But space is super limited where I live now, which is why I still have them so close together. Now you'll notice this pot here is empty, and that one there is mostly empty. It's where the smallest seedlings were replanted. And unfortunately, I placed these pots kind of away from sight, and I completely forgot to water them for many weeks. As a result, the smaller plants did not survive. You can see the dead remains in the pots. Here again, just like on the other containers where ivy is the mum, we have loads of variegated plants, and some of them look weird. In this pot, for instance, I counted 5 variegated out of 13 plants. That is a high proportion. And it may increase if more plants start to show signs of variegation. This time, I'm not going to show you much more of those Twicker Series containers that are outside on my back terrace, as I don't want this video to be too long. But something else I wanted to show you is this wild thing, which comes out of the small container of Pacanoi Francis times Pacanoi Costa. I've shown it to you before, but look how it's evolving. I'll be showing you more of that as it grows. Since it's such an interesting plant, I might even grab the tip at some point, as I would just love to produce seeds from it, and if I can speed up the process by grafting, that's probably what I should do. Just imagine this one crossed with TPM-SPM. There will be some seriously messed up children. These seeds from last year quickly ran out, as I didn't have many to start with. But the good news is, I have more of this particular cross from this year's harvest. I'm glad to report that Francis times Costa is back on the menu. Once again, limited quantities, so don't wait for too long if you want some. I have absolutely no idea if you will get a small percentage of monstrous plants from it, like it happened last year. Only time will tell. But in any case, even if you get no monstrous plants, it should be a spectacular cross, since both Francis and Costa are very bluish San Pedro's. Now let's move on to the peyotes. These are the peyotes that my friend Andy from Georgia sent me. Georgia the state, not the country. Very kind of him to share with me some of the seeds it bought. They are all different varieties, so I sowed them in these small round pots instead of larger containers. Some kinds had better germination rates than others, which means they probably were fresher, and now they are all looking beautiful. If anything, the soil has sunk a bit, exposing part of the taproot, so I will probably have to add a bit of soil around the plants. They will stay in those pots until they become too crowded. Peyotes like small pots, as well as the close proximity of other plants. Finally, let's take a look at some of the old containers with peyote. I believe these were sowed in April 2020, so that makes them two and a half years old. But please, don't take this as an indication of how fast peyotes can grow. Peyotes can grow much faster if given ideal conditions. And these certainly have not been given ideal conditions. In fact, since they are peyotes, and therefore more fragile than San Pedro, I've given them a lot less water than my other plants, to be on the safe side. To get optimal growth, they would need to be watered more often. But for that to happen, you need to monitor closely the frequency of the watering, and adapt it to the temperature. I don't have the time to do that, I have too many plants. So instead, I do very few waterings. But anyway, this is the way they are now. They look great, don't they? And they don't have bugs. 
In fact, the plants I grow from seeds typically don't have bugs, as I always make sure they are in well-ventilated place. I used to have bugs several years ago, mostly thrips, but not anymore. On the other hand, bugs can still be an issue with the older plants I acquire from other people. And in fact, those are the plants in my collection that tend to have bugs, which is why it's always a good idea to quarantine each new plant you buy and look at it closely to make sure it doesn't have bugs. When you buy seedlings, normally they won't have bugs, as long as they've stayed in their original sowing container, but that becomes more of an issue with older plants that have already been repotted, as they have often been mixed with other cacti that may have insects. That is especially true when you buy cuttings. Very often you buy a cool plant, but it also comes with insects. You may not see them at first, because the seller has removed any sign of them. But unless the plant has been properly treated, there might be baby bugs, still invisible, hiding in the creases between the ribs or in the roots. I did buy older peyotes from a shop in Slovenia at some point. They were fairly cheap and they looked great when they arrived, absolutely no bugs that I could see. But soon after, some red spider mites started to show up and they only showed up on those plants that came from Slovenia. So they definitely came from over there. Plus, I'd never come across a red spider mite before in my life. I managed to get rid of them, but that involved unputting all of those Slovenian plants and treating them entirely, roots included. A lot of work. The best way not to import bugs in your collection is to grow your own plants from seeds, although buying young seedlings should be fine as well if they come out of their original sowing container and those haven't been placed close to infected plants. As you can see, there is some green moss in there. It's not really dangerous for the plants, but it's not super healthy and should preferably be removed. Either that or repot the plants. Probably by the end of the winter, the green moss will have died since I will keep my peyotes away from the rain and I won't give them any water until spring. You may remember that when I last showed you this particular container here, there was a tiny peyote with a discolored patch and I was wondering if that wasn't a variegated seedling. Well, here it is again, and now it appears clearly variegated. And also, there is that weird shape peyote close to it. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it was half eaten by rot or by an animal, and for that reason it grew like that? I don't know. I'll keep you posted on these two so that we can see how they evolve over time. Now, these are smaller, therefore younger. I would have to look through my older small container videos to tell you when they were sown. But that is kind of irrelevant because, like I said earlier, this plant could have been grown to that size in a lot less time than it took me. The reason I'm showing you this container in particular is that these are the Kespitosa kind, which means they're going to grow loads of little heads all over, just like the plant you see on the image now. That peyote on the photo is actually one of my dad's plants, and the seeds from it are the ones growing in that container now. At first glance, these don't pop like their mother. They are probably too young still. But if you look closer, much closer, you will find most of these plants are already popping. They start popping at the base, below the soil surface. I don't want to disturb them by pulling them out of the soil just to show you. But if we look close enough, we can see some pups have already appeared. Interestingly enough, as I was looking for the containers in this video, I just couldn't find this one anywhere. For some reason, I found it on the floor of my back terrace, behind a table, hidden from sight and upside down. It must have fallen from the table. I don't know for how long these plants have been upside down, but that could have been a few months. That's probably one of the plants already died, and I'm sure all of them would have eventually died if it wasn't for me having to look for them for this video. If you're wondering what I will do with all these seedlings that I'm growing outdoors, well, this winter I cannot bring them in my living room, which is very sunny with a large south-facing bay window, because now I have a bird. And that rules out having any growing setup in that room, as this little flying devil would land on it and destroy the plants. He loved destroying things. Could I leave the seedlings outdoors? I guess so, since it never freezes where I live. In fact, temperatures in the winter rarely go below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Which means not just all the plants are fine outside, but also younger seedlings. Anything older than about 6 or 9 months should be fine outdoors with this kind of temperatures. The only thing that would happen to them is that they would probably turn reddish, brownish or darker with the cold. That does not hurt the plants in any way. It's a natural process and then they go back to their normal shade of green with warmer temperatures. 
they can look the same as plants that got too much sun in the summer. The only difference is that if it's too much sun, it's more difficult to reverse and that will stunt growth. But like I said, if it's from the cold, then it's absolutely normal, a temporary change and nothing to worry about. I'm still not decided on whether or not I will leave these plants outside or not. If I do leave them outdoors, I will have to remove that shading panel. I should have removed it already in fact, as this north facing terrace receives a lot less sun in the winter and the winter sun is weaker anyway. If on the other hand I were to leave this shading panel, the seedlings could etiolate. I know they're not supposed to grow in the winter, but here on the Mediterranean coast, there are often episodes of very warm weather during winter and that will get them to grow again. Another reason to remove the shading panel is that air movement around the plants will increase and that helps against insects just like the cold does. In fact, you will never get bug infestation outdoors in the winter, whereas you can sometimes have problems with insects if you grow them indoors in the winter as you simulate growing season conditions. If I were to move these plants indoors, I only have space in that room where the other containers are growing. It's a north facing room with a lot of ambient light but no direct sun. Not as good as my south facing living room with loads of direct sunlight which I can filter. But this is an option if I want these plants to carry on growing during the winter. In which case I would probably use my spider farmer LED light which is perfect for growing seedlings a year old or older. I'm still quite undecided on what to do. As for all my peyotes, I will have to bring them in for sure since I don't have any part of my terraces that is protected from rain. You gotta keep in mind peyotes don't like too much rain and they especially hate the combination of cold and wet. I don't want to kill them so they will have to go in. Since Lophophoras are so slow to grow, I won't bother growing them during the winter. Instead, I will probably place them on some shelves, somewhere preferably dark and cool, where they will hibernate, with the soil being very dry of course. There will be another video in this series soon, where we will talk about the small containers currently growing indoors and whether or not they will be joined by the containers from outside. So stay tuned for that. Now if you guys want to order high quality hand pollinated seeds from me, or seedlings grown from the same seeds, feel free to send me an email and I will reply with prices, information and photos. You will find my email address in the description of this video. I'm also making it appear on the screen now. Since I've shown you peyote seedlings in this video, I would like to remind you that I will only ship those to Europe, Scandinavia and the UK. What I can ship worldwide are the seeds and seedlings of San Pedro and relatives in the Trucoceros family. Yes, these I can ship to most countries around the world. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon for another video.